In this video, I wanted to take a look at the key features and pros and cons of the Poco X4 Pro. The phone usually costs about 300 bucks, but retailer Heka, which is one of the authorized retailers of Xiaomi and Poco, currently sells it for about 250 bucks. Check out the video description for all the links and show notes. In order to make the X4 Pro stand out, Poco used a glass backplate that looks a little bit different. It has a unique effect. Once some light comes into play, its reflection begins shooting various laser-like rays across the back panel. This looks really cool in practice and I appreciate Poco's efforts in making something different. Flip the phone to the front and you'll be greeted with a superb quality 6.67 inches AMOLED display that is bright, colorful and it is easily among the best screens in this price range. It also has a 120Hz refresh rate for motion smoothness. To protect it, Poco used a sheet of Gorilla Glass 5. The frame of the phone is made of plastic, but the overall build quality of the device is great. The X4 Pro can survive accidental splashes too, thanks to IP53 certification. I have to say that it is really nice to see this feature in the mid-range segment. I like a very fast and reliable fingerprint scanner that is embedded into a power key, loud and great quality dual speakers, and the fact that the X4 Pro has a 3.5mm jack, NFC, FM radio, IR blaster, and a micro SD card slot. A Snapdragon 695 is at the core of this device. The highest-end model has 8GB of RAM and 256GB of storage, but my unit has 6GB of RAM and 128GB of storage. Gaming performance is good overall, especially considering the price of the phone. As usual, in the mid-tier segment, you'll see some skipped frames and a bit of stutter in titles like Asphalt 9. However, games like Call of Duty and PUBG run fine, meaning that you don't need to spend hundreds more to enjoy playing these games. It's a little bit disappointing that the phone runs on the MIUI 13 that is built on top of Android 11. I hope that most of these Xiaomi and Poco phones will get updated to Android 12. Either way, the overall performance has been pretty good and I received a software update just a day before making this video, which added a bit of speed and fluidity. We have all the usual features and customization options just like on all Xiaomi and Poco phones, meaning that if you are into tweaking your mobile, this or any other Xiaomi device is for you. The phone uses a 108 megapixels main camera that is coupled with an 8 megapixels ultra wide and a 2 megapixels macro shooter. On the front, there is a 16 megapixel snapper. The wide-angle shooter produces images that lack detail and sharpness. The main camera is better, but the pictures also could be a little bit more detailed and some of the shots have this weird yellow tint. 2 times zoom photos do not impress, but a dedicated 108 megapixels mode should be used for the best possible image quality out of this phone. Even though quite a few shots are underexposed, but the overall quality is pretty good. Portrait pictures may have some artifacts around the edges of the object, but in general, they look pretty good. The low light shots are not the sharpest I've seen, but the quality is decent. Selfies and selfie portraits look pretty good overall, but you might see some artifacts around the edges in some of the shots. The phone lacks a 4K video recording, which is a shame even in the price segment. On the other hand, 1080p video is stable and smooth and the quality is decent. 1080p selfie video looks decent, but its stabilization could be better. For audio quality, hear it yourself. Handheld footage, no stabilization tools whatsoever. Let me do a short pan. Now let me walk a little bit. So this is how the video looks like, handheld, no stabilization tools. The phone has a built-in 5000 mAh battery, which is definitely one of the highlights. The device can easily last several days for an average user, and when you need to recharge the device, it takes just 41 minutes with a supplied 67W fast charger. If you tend to watch a lot of video, you'll be able to do that for more than 15 hours, even at 100% of screen brightness. 
The Poco X4 Pro offers a lot for the price, but just like all phones in this price segment, it has some flaws. First of all, the phone still runs on Android 11. I think it's about time for Xiaomi to update their phones to Android 12. Other quirks are mostly related to camera. The wide-angle shooter could perform better, and even the main camera could produce sharper photos considering it has quite a powerful 108 megapixel sensor. Further, I believe that phones even at this price point should have a 4K video recording. On a positive note, the X4 Pro has a lot to offer. It has an excellent quality AMOLED display, the design is nice, the build quality is good, the phone is IP53 certified, and I like loud and great quality dual speakers, and the fact that the X4 Pro has a 3.5mm jack, NFC, FM radio, IR blaster, and a micro SD card slot. If you add good overall performance and excellent battery life with a super fast charging, you are looking at a well-balanced mid-range phone that can still be highly recommended because of its value proposition, despite previously mentioned shortcomings. What do you think about the Poco X4 Pro? Would you buy this device or would you choose another option in this price range? As always, like the video if you liked it, please drop me a comment down below if you have any questions, and as always, it was Lionus, thank you for watching and see you soon.